It's the world's first exhibition in honor of a perfume. Celebrities mingling at the Vernissage in the Palais de Tokyo in Paris included French actress Audrey Tautou, who featured in a major Chanel ad campaign in 2009. I was really delighted to be able to make a tiny contribution to the history of Chanel No. 5. I was hugely honored. French actress Carole Bouquet was the face of the iconic scent for a number of years in the 1980s. Whenever I used to work for Chanel, I always used to say, in France there is baguette, la saint and Chanel number no. 5. That's the picture people have of France anywhere in the world. Chanel No. 5 stands for a certain kind of femininity, and that femininity has been reinterpreted again and again over the years. Back in 1937, Gabrielle Chanel, better known as Coco, promoted the perfume herself. She'd already created the scent with perfumer Ernest Beau in 1921. Curator Jean-Louis Fromont explains how the exhibition came about. This perfume number no. five never followed the typical marketing strategies of the luxury brands. Gabrielle Chanel didn't create the perfume and the flacon with simple commercial reasons at heart. The creation of this perfume was a secret. And I thought it was very interesting to tell the story. A collection of documents give an insight into the historical background surrounding Chanel No. 5, a perfume that Coco Chanel originally created for herself after the death of her lover, Boy Capel. Visitors to the exhibition will also learn about the fashion designer's private life and what kind of influence she had as a style icon. It sheds light especially on her close ties to artists like Pablo Picasso and Spanish painter Salvador Dali. The exhibition is very moving. All these personal pieces, letters and poems that document her friendships. All these testimonials are touching. Now I realize what an inspiration Coco Chanel was in the early years. I was surprised to see that they made a bust of her back in 1922. That's very impressive. The history of Chanel No. 5 is also inextricably linked to the Hollywood star Marilyn Monroe and Andy Warhol's artworks of 1985. The second part of the exhibition focuses on the scent itself. Chanel perfumer Christopher Sheldrake invites the public to take part in creating the once revolutionary perfume themselves. One can't really comprehend a perfume. For me, a perfume is an emotion, a feeling. But we still want to show people what Chanel No. 5 is made of, where its ingredients come from, and most importantly, what they smell like. And each note of the perfume should send them on a journey. For example, to the southern French city of Grasse, where jasmine flowers and Provence roses are harvested all year round to make the perfume. And although Chanel No. 5 is still one of the best-selling fragrances in the world, perfumer Christopher Sheldrake brought out a modern version of the classic scent in 2008. Chanel No. 5 is regarded as timeless, and of course we wanted to stay that way. That makes our day-to-day -day work especially difficult, because we're always trying to get inside the heads of Gabriel Chanel and Anis Beau and reinterpret No. 5 for our time. And the advertising campaigns for Chanel No. 5 always tread new ground. In 2012, actor Brad Pitt became the first man to head an ad for the product. 92 years after its creation, Chanel No. 5 remains as intriguing as ever. <laughs>